In this video on quadratic functions and equations, we're going to be learning about the role of the discriminant, also known as delta. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is use the space I have here, as well as here, to summarize what we need to know about delta. If you already know about the discriminant delta and you just want to skip ahead to see how to solve each of these two examples, then I've added sections to this video for you to skip ahead. And if not, keep on watching to see everything you need to know. Given a quadratic function, so I'll say f of x, which equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, its discriminant, which we typically call delta, is given by the formula delta equals to b squared minus 4ac. And I'll go ahead and box that. Do make a note of this formula if you hadn't seen it before. That's the formula for the discriminant delta. To be clear, delta is the name given to the symbol you see here. And this symbol is nothing more than the Greek equivalent of our capital letter D. D for discriminant. And so given a quadratic function, as well as its curve, the parabola y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, here's what its value of delta tells us. For a given quadratic function, when we calculate its value of delta, there are three possibilities. First of all, if ever delta is positive, in other words, it's greater than zero, then the quadratic function has two distinct real roots, which we also call zeros. So we could say that the function has two distinct, meaning different, two distinct real zeros. And what this means as far as the parabola is concerned is that the curve will cross the x-axis twice. And that can be illustrated in either one of the following two ways. If the leading coefficient a is positive, so if a is positive, then the parabola will be a concave up parabola. And provided delta is positive, it will cross the x-axis in two points, here and here. On the other hand, if the leading coefficient a is negative, then we'll be dealing with a concave down parabola, looking something like this. And once more, provided delta is positive, we'll be able to state that it crosses the x-axis twice, say here and here. And the values of x at which the parabola crosses the x-axis are the solutions to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. And when delta is positive, the solutions to this equation are given by the formula x equals to the opposite of b, or negative b, plus or minus the square root of delta over 2a. And so that's the first possibility. If the discriminant delta is positive, then the function has two distinct real zeros, which tells us that the parabola crosses the x-axis in two points, and the values of x at which the parabola crosses the x-axis are the solutions to this equation, which we find with this formula here. The second possibility is if delta equals to zero. In this case, the quadratic function has two equal real roots. And I'll just write that. It has two equal real roots. Now, since the two roots or the two zeros are equal, we'll sometimes say that it has one single solution, which we call the double root. And what this means in terms of the parabola is that it only touches the x-axis in one point. And so once more, depending upon whether the leading coefficient a is positive or negative, we'll be faced with a parabola looking like either one of the following two. First of all, if a is positive, then we'll have a concave up parabola, looking something like this, which will touch the x-axis at one single value of x. On the other hand, if the leading coefficient a is negative, then we'll have a concave down parabola, looking something like that. And again, providing delta is equal to zero, it will touch the x-axis in one point. And the value of x at which these parabola touch the x-axis is equal to the solution to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Indeed, if delta equals to zero, then the formula we have here boxed in red reduces to 
x equals to the opposite of b or negative b over 2a. And the reason for this is if we replace delta inside this formula by zero, then whether we consider plus or minus, then this square root will equal to zero. And whether we consider the case plus zero or minus zero, both possibilities will lead to negative b over 2a. Finally, the third and last possibility is that delta be negative, in other words, less than zero. In this case, the quadratic function has no real roots. And as far as the parabola is concerned, it will never cross nor touch the x-axis. And so if the leading coefficient a is positive, then we'll be dealing with a parabola which is entirely above the x-axis, so it will look like this. And on the other hand, if the leading coefficient a is negative, then we'll be dealing with a parabola which is underneath the x-axis, which will look something like this. And since neither one of these parabola cross the x-axis, when delta is negative, the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero doesn't have any real solutions. Okay, that's it for this summary of what the discriminant delta tells us about the number of zeros or roots a quadratic function has. And now that we know these three possibilities, we are ready to work through the two examples that we see here. And I'll use a fresh page for each one of these examples, but in each case, I'll leave this summary on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead. Okay, in this first example, we are given f of x, which equals to x squared plus x plus k, and we need to find the value of k for which f of x has two equal roots. Now, looking at this quadratic function, since there's an unknown coefficient k, it's not possible to solve it right away. Besides, it's important to realize here that we're not actually being asked to find the roots or the zeros of this function. We're being asked to find the value of k. And for that, we're given a vital bit of information. Indeed, we're told that this quadratic function f of x has two equal roots. And following what we saw on the previous page, we know that a quadratic function has two equal roots when its discriminant delta equals zero. And so we can state right away that for this quadratic function to have two equal roots, we must have delta equal to zero. So let's go ahead and find an expression for delta and equate it to zero. Let's see, I'll copy the function. We have f of x, which equals to x squared plus x plus k. And if I compare that to the generic ax squared plus bx plus c, I can quickly list the values of each of the coefficients a, b, and c. Indeed, since we have x squared, that means that a is equal to 1, and we're adding x to that, which means that b is also equal to 1, and finally we're adding k, which tells us that c is equal to k. So let me quickly list those. We have a, which equals to 1, b, which is also equal to 1, and c, which equals to k. Now let's use those values to calculate delta. Remember, delta is given by the formula, delta equals to b squared minus 4ac. And so replacing b, a, and c by their respective values, we quickly find that delta is equal to 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times k. That leads us to 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, times k. So that's 4k. And that's this function's value for delta. Now again, we know that this quadratic function has two equal roots, and that consequently delta has to equal to zero. But since delta is equal to one minus four k, we can state that one minus four k has to equal zero. And all we have to do now is solve this equation for k. And so I'll do that here. I'll start by getting rid of this 4k that's being subtracted from the left-hand side, and I do so by adding 4k to both sides, which leads us to 1 equals to 4k. Next, I can see on the right-hand side that k is being multiplied by 4, so to get rid of that 4, I divide both sides by 4. Finally, that leads us to 1 over 4 equals to k, or simply k equals to 1 over 4. And that's the answer. Provided k equals to 1 over 4 or 1 quarter, 
this quadratic function will have two equal roots. And we're done. Let's look at the next example. In this second example, we're told to find the values of k for which the equation kx squared plus 2x plus k equals 0 has, first of all, two distinct real solutions, and then secondly, no real solutions. Well, let's see. Once more, we're dealing with a quadratic. More specifically here, we're dealing with a quadratic equation. And since we don't know the value of k, let me start by saying it's not possible to solve this equation. But just as in the previous example, we're not actually being asked to solve this equation. Instead, we're being asked to find the values of k, for which this equation has either two distinct real solutions or no real solutions. And following what we learnt about the discriminant delta earlier on, we know what each of these two things mean. Indeed, the quadratic equation will have two distinct real solutions if delta is positive. Remember, we had seen that when delta is greater than zero, the quadratic function has two distinct real zeros, and that the parabola crossed the x-axis at two values of x, which were the solutions to the quadratic equation. So we know that for two distinct solutions, delta must be positive. On the other hand, for there to be no real solutions, we had seen with the third possibility that that must mean that delta is negative. And so I can write that here. To answer the second question, we'll need to find k such that delta is negative. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and find delta for this quadratic equation. And I'll just start by copying that equation here. We have kx squared plus 2x plus k equals 0. Again, I'll quickly compare that to the generic ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'll state the values of the coefficients a, b, and c. Let's see, we have a which equals to k, b which equals to 2, and c which equals to k. So let me quickly write that. We have a which is equal to k, b which is equal to 2, and c which is equal to k. And now that I've done that, I'm ready to calculate delta, which remember equals to b squared minus 4ac. And so replacing b, a, and c by their respective values, we can state that delta is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times k times k. And that becomes 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times k times k, which is 4k squared. And that's this quadratic equation's value for delta. And now that we have this, we can answer these two questions. For question 1, remember, the equation needs to have two distinct real solutions. And so delta has to be positive. And I'll just rewrite that here. Delta has to be positive. But since delta is equal to 4 minus 4k squared, we need 4 minus 4k squared to be positive. And one way of solving quadratic inequalities like this one is by considering this quadratic's parabola. Here's what I mean. Let's say I were to consider the parabola whose equation is y equals to 4 minus 4k squared. Now, don't let the fact that we're dealing with the letter k instead of an x bother you. We're going to treat this in exactly the same way as we would if this were an x. And I'll start by rewriting this as y equals to negative 4k squared plus 4. Now, since this quadratic doesn't have any middle term, indeed we have the quadratic term, the k squared and the constant, but there's no term involving just k in the middle here. And since that's the case, this quadratic is symmetrical on either side of the y-axis. Furthermore, this negative 4 that's multiplying the k squared is the leading coefficient. And because it's negative, we must be dealing with a concave down parabola. And so what I like to do is to quickly make a sketch of this parabola on a k and y grid. Which would look something like this. I'd have my k-axis, that's k, and I'd have my y-axis looking like this. And this parabola would look something like this. There we go. Now it crosses the y-axis at 4. So I can put this here. I can write 4 right there. And all I have to do now is find where it crosses the k-axis. And to do that, I need to solve the equation negative 4k squared plus 4 equals 0. And I'll go ahead and do that over here. We're solving negative 4k squared plus 4 equals 0. And the first thing I'll do for that is place negative 4 as a factor to this entire expression. And that would be negative 4 times, in parentheses, k squared minus 1. And that's equal to 0. 
Next, I'll use the fact that we can think of k squared minus 1 as k squared minus 1 squared to factor this using the difference of two squares. And so I can write this as negative 4 times k plus 1 times k minus 1 equals to 0. And now these two factors, k plus 1 and k minus 1, are what will give me the two values of k at which this curve crosses the k-axis. Indeed, this entire product will equal to 0 if either k plus 1 equals to 0, which would lead to solving k plus 1 equals 0 and therefore k equals to negative 1, or if k minus 1 equals to 0, which would lead to k minus 1 equals to 0 and therefore k equals to 1. And these two values of k are the values at which this parabola cuts the k-axis. And so I can label them negative 1 and 1. And now that I've done that, I'm ready to solve this inequality. Indeed, 4 minus 4k squared will be greater than 0 when the parabola y, which equals to 4 minus 4k squared, is above the x-axis. And we can see quite clearly here that the parabola is above the k-axis for k values between negative 1 and 1. And that's the solution to this inequality. 4 minus 4k squared, and therefore delta, will be greater than 0 if k is less than 1 and greater than negative 1. And that's the answer to the first question. Provided k is between negative 1 and 1, this quadratic equation will have two distinct real solutions. For question 2, which I'll do up here, we want to find the values of k for which this quadratic equation has no real solutions which, as we saw earlier on, corresponds to delta being negative. And since we've already calculated delta for this quadratic equation, we can quickly state that delta will be negative when 4 minus 4k squared is negative. And in the same way that I worked with the parabola for the previous question, I can use this again for this inequality. And I can state that 4 minus 4k squared will be less than 0 as soon as the parabola y equals to 4 minus 4k squared is underneath the x-axis. And we can see from my sketch here that this parabola is underneath the x-axis, in other words negative, for k values less than negative 1 and for k values greater than 1. And those are the solutions to this inequality. And we can state that 4 minus 4k squared, and therefore delta, will be negative provided k is less than negative 1 and k is greater than 1. And that's the answer to the second question. Indeed, for k less than negative 1 or k greater than 1, this quadratic equation's delta will be negative and it will have no real solutions. And there we go. That's it for this video on quadratic functions and equations and on the role of the discriminant delta.